Okay, we're back here live at HP Discover. This is, we're in Las Vegas for day three of uh, three days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage at HP Discover. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out to the advanced extract to signal from the noise. I'm John Furrier, the founder of SiliconANGLE, and I'm joined by my co-host. Hi everybody, I'm Dave Vellante of wikibon.org. And this is theCUBE. We're here with Christoph Fister, who's the Vice President and General Manager of the Business Service Management component of HP Software. Christoph, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you so much. So tell us a little bit about the, the business that you run within HP Software. What's, what's the focus? Absolutely, so um, it's called Business Service Management, and what we do is we ensure availability and performance of large data centers, the infrastructure, as well as the applications that run within that infrastructure. So we're talking about problem management, change management, is that right, or it's more, uh, identification? Event, event performance event management, management, the analytics that go with it, uh, and across you know, all components of the data center networks, systems, storage, uh, the apps, and uh, you know, everything around it. And does, does Help Desk fit into that, or, or no? Help, Desk, Help Desk is closely connected to it, so uh, people typically deploy our solutions in what is called the closed loop incident problem management framework. And so, you know, once they get events and they need to deal with them in a more uh, systemic manner, meaning there's no quick fix, it becomes a trouble ticket, and that's when it goes into the help desk, desk system and the change management system. And once that's done, it comes back to us and the, the events get closed out. So it's very closely done. Ah, okay, so the change the change management database is part of your organization, or is it's it not. not? It's not, okay, it's not. okay, great. So you have to, you have to we feed that. Across, yes. yeah, exactly, we work across uh, these boundaries. Uh, okay, so, so is it? On the, so you guys have you know the application lifecycle type part of the software group. Is that your group too, or? So look at it as the application lifecycle management to the left of me. That's where the development happens. Yep. Once the development of the app is done, it gets into production. That's where the operations people are, and they do, you know, they use business service management tools. And then once things you know break bad enough, then you know it goes to the service master. So I sit in the middle between these two. Uh, so these you get to you get to fight the ops and the dev guys. So you're the <laughs> DevOps broker, right? So you're brokering, you know, you know, no downtime to hey, I'm just iterating fast, right? So I mean that's the challenge we're living in right now is you know the DevOps culture is hitting the enterprise. Is that kind of is, yeah. Is, so you know I. Um, there's sort of the DevOps uh, religion, and then there's you know what the uh, enterprises experience, and it's true that there's still significant walls between the development folks yeah. and uh, and the operations, and uh, yeah, some of the stuff we're trying to do is trying to break down these uh, these walls. Yeah, IT service management is still quite siloed, um, and so talk about how you're breaking those down. I mean, one way is obviously you can have a single CMDB, but a lot of times customers don't want to go to a single CMDB because they have their own. Yeah. you know, database. So talk about what's going on, what are the big trends that you're seeing within service management? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, one of the things we're, uh, we're hearing a lot now is, um, you know, the old management paradigm of sort of instrumenting your IT environment for known problems. You know, where you have these systems, you say, I'm going to drop an agent on that thing, and then you're going to instrument that agent for, you know, events and all that stuff. It's, uh, it's becoming difficult to do, why? Because these IT environments are becoming so dynamic, uh, they're growing so fast, and so this paradigm of um, you know, management by exception is something that customers are uh, more and more struggling with. And so um, you know, we see a shift happening where uh, instead of that paradigm, there's this notion of you know, collect, store, and analyze that's becoming um, you know, a trend. And so that's exactly what we're responding to with this notion of uh, operational analytics, where you bring all these, you know, all this machine data into one place, and then you drive analytics on, uh, on top. So one of the things we had George Kadif on yesterday, um, EVP of the software group, and you know we were talking about the new the new style of business, not just IT but business, and that's satisfaction. I mean, I'm oversimplifying kind of what not it's my words, but he was basically saying satisfaction, uh, new ways to write code, and you know he made a reference that you know with open source there are now a variety of different languages to program in. Um, so one of the hot areas that, that we didn't get a chance to talk about is visualization. So on big data, that's a very very hot topic. Absolutely. Visualizing data. So on the code side. You guys have a lot of SaaS now uh, offering where developers can actually look at visualization, a lot of automation on code. Can you just give us an update on where that is in this operational analytics piece? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, we, we, uh, we're focused on doing advanced analytics on top of this, you know, data lake, okay, you, if you want to call it that way. And advanced analytics has a number of different components. It has a component of, um, uh, you know, machine learning, algorithms, 
but also visualization is becoming very, very uh, key. Why? Because you know, to be able to understand what's going on, you know, humans can. I read that once, found that interesting. Uh, you know, in, in text form, humans can process, process about 200 words per minute. If you give them a picture, they can pro process the equivalent of about 2,000 words per minute. So visual is, you know, makes business sense. It's not just, you know, pictures worth a thousand words, literally <laughs> thousands of words, exactly. <laughs> worth two thousand words. <laughs> yeah, but that's we got, true. We got the real stats to back it up now. Uh, and so, uh, visual analytics is part of what we do around advanced analytics. And so, so good. Sorry. Yeah, I, that I was, was your demo yesterday, right? Yeah, absolutely. yeah. That's what I wanted that to connect to that. Where yeah. you use, uh, you know, hot data type charts, and uh, that, you know, that allows you to represent heat in the IT environment it's very, very quickly in a big complex IT environment. You burn my hotspots. It's, it's using as much the same technologies that are applied in. Um, you know, I'm from Germany, and Germans are big on, uh, you know, green. Yeah. <laughs> and so they do. Uh, Americans like, too. You know, pointing <laughs> thermal cameras at their houses to see where the heat escapes. You know, it's using some of these same uh, same um, ideas and, and concepts. Point that camera at my house. But so, but the, but for those of you who didn't see the demo, it was uh, it was very cool. It's like a heat map, but it's also a time machine. So you you gave the demo right on stage yesterday. So you I basically did. were able to dial back. So you said we saw red bad, and then you were able to dial back in very granular increments. I mean, by the minute or second or whatever it was until you started to see. It's almost like a weather map when you see the you know the the storms coming in. Exactly. Is it up? It's red, red, red. Now it's good. Oh, what happened now? Okay, so how do you determine what happened? How does an individual determine what well, happened? Well, so you know that this uh, time lapse analytics is one of the analytics we do, one of the advanced analytics, and it's really the concept of you have all this data in one place, you collect it over you know long periods of time, and you have it in these high-speed databases, and so all of a sudden you can go you know back and forward in time in your IT environment because the speed is there. You have the raw you know processing power to do that kind of stuff. Before you know in these BI type solutions, you could do similar things, but you had to type a query, wait for six hours, look at it, and then you know sort of think about what you needed to do next. Now you can go you know back in you know whatever increment you want. So you can go back and look at your IT environment, how it was three hours ago, and if it was in better shape than it is now, and then what might have you know potentially caused the issue because you don't have just the performance metric and the visuals, you also have the log data at exactly that point in time, and so it's very very quick to sort of pinpoint. Uh, issues and uh, it's very exciting. So this time lapse analytics, this is new, obviously. It's absolutely um, new. So how do how do I how do I buy? If I have a license of your existing IT service management, I, 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 can I add I add on to this? How does a, a consumer? So engage? we're announcing it at uh, this show, and it's going to be available in Q3 uh, calendar of this year. So you can't buy it right now. Right. Okay. But uh, once it's available, you can absolutely uh, buy a license and uh, deploy it and uh, get better. What's What's happening in terms of the sassification of your business? Because a lot of IT service management products are, you know, installed on premise. You know, they're they're many of them are many decades old and they've evolved over time. But is that model moving to SaaS? And what's HP doing in that regard? Yeah, so we see, obviously, the, uh, the help desk market is the one that's, you know, furthest along in terms of satisfaction. You know, we're probably at 70% or so penetration already. Uh, other areas of, uh, of ITSM or business service management are a little bit further behind because, you know, especially on the infrastructure side, it's not, uh, you know, you have, you have agents to deal with, and so it's not, it doesn't suit as well, suit itself as well for SaaS, but, we think the next, um, you know, ne next piece that's going to go is uh, is around application performance management, where you do uh, end user monitoring, end user behavior type uh, type stuff, and so we brought out about a month ago what we call our performance anywhere solution, which is application performance management on SaaS, and it brings together, um, you know, synthetic monitoring, which is sort of uh, you know the robots go out and uh, test uh, performance against the website, with um, you know more deeper. Uh, real user monitoring, where you really get um, you know the experience that a, a single user has, and we do that by you know sniffing out the transactions and uh, figuring out what the response time is for a particular user. So this is uh, you know the next uh, the next big thing in SaaS, we think. And uh, one last question, if I may, uh, before I turn it over to John. So, are, are customers still using a lot of spreadsheets to do the sort of infrastructure? Incident management, and problem uh, management, or is it no, beyond we're, that? No, we're beyond uh, okay. that. But you know, where uh, people are. Uh, I was in Japan uh, two weeks ago, and uh, what really struck me there is that you know people are still very, very focused on you know the, the hardcore infrastructure management, managing networks, managing systems, and we think you know the time is is now to look beyond that and look at uh, you know what 
what's the end user experience on top of what the infrastructure monitoring provides? Because very often times your infrastructure looks green, yet uh, you know the users are calling up and saying, hey, I got the performance that sucks. And so you want to get ahead of that game. And so that's why the combination of application performance, top down, and bottom up infrastructure management is uh, such a big deal. I mean, I saw, obviously, the great story from HP. Obviously, they have a lot, a lot of perspectives with the big data from the network and the app side. But I want to ask you about the market trends. So, obviously, um, for applications, automation is very important, right? So, but with open source, social presence, there are people are located all around the world. So, talk about the collaboration development environment that's there with open source, and talk about some of the aut automation, and how do you guys address that, and specifically around pricing and business model, because it's clear that you know, your vision's right on the money with you know, the idea of how people develop, right? Um, it develops all around the world, follow the sun, variety of different perspectives. Yeah, we do that uh, ourselves, and, actually. And, and also automation, and we, George was mentioning yesterday, Kadifa was like, okay, everything looks green, but also there's one spot in the code that might not be seen, we want a predictive, mechanism to fix those things. Right. So that's automation, and that's, so developers need that, or they need someone else who might be coding to see the changes. So there's all this change management of the code to automation, so talk about the productivity, the social collaboration, okay. uh, and then how do you so, price that? Remember, I'm on the operations side of the house, so you know, the development piece is not really, really mine, but you know, we see a lot of um, you know, automation happening there in the sense that you know, once you discover a problem, and you can use analytics to do that, and do that very, very quickly with some of the new technologies we're bringing out, but then you would also, you know, very, very quickly remediate the issue. And their automation is a big deal now, in terms of, you know, instead of an operator going, you know, through their own scripts and all that kind of stuff, you can automate a lot of, uh, a lot of the remediation. The, 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 the way we do it is, that, is uh, through runbooks. So we integrate runbooks into our uh, monitoring uh, solution. And so these runbooks then can uh, either run fully automatically if that's what the customer desires, or the operator can step through, you know, in a in a in a step-by-step uh, -step, uh, um, way through the runbook, and at any given point in time, say, you know, I want to execute the step, or or I don't. And so that's how we uh, look at automation in the context of, uh, of monitoring. Well, let's talk operations then, because since that's your side of the house, we can leave the app side for the other guys in the software group. But yes. so <laughs> DevOps obviously is the is the model. You see that with mobile people who use Amazon, for instance. I have Node.js. I'm coding this, and the mindset is a developer mindset, iterating. So downtime is simply just reboot, add more code, push new code. You go to an enterprise and you bring that kind of mindset. They want agile but this idea of the thing could go down is just not an option, right? So we call that no ops, right? So ops dev really becomes the focus. So how do you guys manage that? They want, they want fast app pushing code, but the ops piece has to be reliable. There's SLAs involved, there's maybe some security issues and other things. Can you talk about that trend and how you guys are looking at that? Yeah, it's really, um you know, customers are at different stages as uh, as you look at uh, at that, and you know, there's you know the the very uh, you know the, the early adopters uh, that you know are the Netflixes and, and what have you, and you know they're very far advanced in, in that regard. And then you look at uh, the other end of the spectrum, oftentimes government agencies, and I've talked to a few uh, here where uh, you know th th again the walls between dev and ops are still so high and the politics involved and all that kind of stuff. And so it's very, very difficult to push the DevOps religion now. With that said, uh, they are looking at, uh, you know, improving things like release management, which really is, uh, you know, the, um, you know, the practice that is being used to, you know, push code from development into, into operations. And so being able to automate releases, uh, being able to do that for not just you know the uh, the application itself, but all the underlying infrastructure is a big, big. There's uh, a QA trend. issue on the hardware too. I mean, they've done the networks, right? You mentioned earlier networks. So doing the release management is one thing, but you got to manage the QA of making sure things are tested. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, that's pretty critical. Absolutely. And so again, that's you know that's more on the dev side of the house, but uh, you know doing the load testing before you uh, roll things out, making sure that. Uh, so you know, a good example of that is uh, we showed this uh, this coffee app in uh, in, in main stage. So uh, you know, it said you know you guys download this app and then you uh, you can get free coffee. And what we had to do because there's ten people, ten thousand people, uh, you know, sitting in front of main stage. Everybody potentially you know downloading this app. Can our servers actually you know respond to that to that demand? And so there was some significant load testing involved. You know, given the the size of the uh, the audience. And so, you know, once that was done, then the the app, if you like, would, was moved into production. Christoph, what's the meaning of business? The term business service management um, is it because you're running the business of IT, 
I always think of IT service management. Is that is it because IT is so connected to the business? What's the what's the reason for that? Well, we think that um, you know IT needs to provide business value, and uh, one of the ways you uh, you know you can look at that is to say, look, instead of just managing you know uh, you know some infrastructure or the app or whatever, you really want to look at the value that's being delivered to uh, to the business, and so looking at you know the service that's being delivered and the value that service provides is what we call you know, business service management. So what's the, uh, we sometimes, John and I like to sort of talk about the horses on the track. You know, what's the competitive landscape look like in this market? What's going on out there? Help us squint through uh, what, where HP fits and, and, and what's going on. Yeah, so we think we're in a, in a great place right now because there's lots of uh, disruption. And um, so there's you know a lot of uh, a lot of movement in in the market and you know these these new trends around uh, you know analytics big data uh, we believe we have uh, you know quite an edge on uh, on our competitors right now and uh, I think the the stuff that you've seen on uh, on main stage around big data Haven and how we take advantage of that in in the context of uh, context of uh, IT IT management itself is very, very differential. Okay, so you got the big systems companies all play in this space, correct? Uh, presumably. Uh, and then you've got some third party guys that play, some of them are probably even partners with you. Uh, and then you've got some, I guess, you know, upstarts that are, that are coming in, right? And there's this big disruption going on with cloud and big data, and that's what you're trying to capitalize on. Absolutely. Good. All right, so what's, uh, what's next for you guys? What should we, we be watching for? Well, you should watch for um, you know rolling out uh, um, another round of exciting capabilities around analytics. So we're just getting started. We're just uh, just scratching the surface. Uh, you know the uh, the visual analytics that we've presented uh, are just uh, the start. We're going to work on that. We're going to work on uh, exciting algorithms that actually uh, over time should allow us to predict where things are going. So you know not just drawing some. Um, you know, regression lines, uh, some trend lines, but really figuring out, okay, so if I'm in this state now, you know, what's going to happen in, you know, two, three hours from now? Am I able to predict that there's going to be any issues based on the data I have? You know, similar, uh, um, uh, you know, similar concepts or uh, setups in the past, you know, can I predict where uh, things are going to go? That's the next step. Okay, Christoph, thanks for coming inside theCUBE. Obviously, predictive analytics, big data. I mean, this is this is the future. Rapid development environment, rolling, rolling things in production fast. That's what mobile world is showing us. That's what, uh, and doing it in reliable. That's the enterprise uh, value opportunity. Not just uh, the wild, wild west. As some, as some other folks do it out there. Dave, we've been talking about that, although we love Amazon. Um, <laughs> uh, thanks for coming inside theCUBE. This is theCUBE at Live in Las Vegas. Thank uh, you guys for having me. We discover. We'll be right back with our next guest after this short break.